In 2091, Earth's blissful existence was governed by a powerful master computer. Then one day, something went wrong with the master control program. Chaos ensued as people panicked. Nova was sun summoned. The name of your guys, Nova. And your summons to go. Nova, you must contact six agents that are hiding in the six sectors protecting the master computer. Your contacts are John Gordon, Robert Williams, David Strecker, Linda Baker, Martin D Douglas, pretty simple names there, Daniel Leeds. Each contact will give you an ID card used to access the security room located in a different sector. Defeat the guards within the security rooms and grab the secret tape units. After you obtain all six tape units, you will gain access to the control center. At the control center, you must defeat the guards to destroy the computer and restore order to our to society. Be careful, Nova, and watch your backside. Alrighty, that's it, guys. Uh, I didn't get myself enough room leadway to um, introduce myself before the uh, first title screen, so. I thought I started out with the uh, with reading the uh, the storyline of it, so everybody will know what's going on. Uh, so you're just badass. Your name is Nova, you know, and you you read what's going on. Uh, we're gonna have it. You're gonna be looking for some people to give us ID cards to give us access to. Uh, of course, you know what. Um. Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and start with our commentary now, since I'm done with the story. Uh, yes, this is Power Blade from 1991. Uh, Tato. Very, very unique and awesome game. Um, uh, great visuals. Definitely solid gameplay. I can say the best thing about this game will probably be the gameplay. The gameplay is very solid, very fun. Uh, de definitely the really solid gameplay, really solid controls. Um, you control your guy, does whatever you want him to do. There, you know, there's no slipping off the, the platforms, because of course you're going to be doing some platforming in this game. Um, a lot of platforming, but, you know, your character will always stick the landing. He would not take any extra step that you don't want him to. It's just really, really perfect gameplay. It doesn't get any more perfect than this to me. Um, I didn't get a chance to, um... I did not get a chance to, to play this one as a child because in 91, as you, a lot of you know, I've got my Genesis for Christmas, and it was all about the Genesis in, in 91. So I missed out on, uh, I sort of missed out on this, this classic right here. Even though I was, you know, still low-key playing my NES, but, you know, I was all about the 16-bit the uh, era at this time. I also did expert run of this of uh, expert run. I'm going to be doing an expert play of this run, as well as a speed run of this. So we're going to be doing three separate runs of Power Blade. Cause the game is that badass and the game is that fun. Um, I will play this game over and over again. It's a really fun, uh, straightforward run game. It's really solid and fun gameplay. You notice how, how great, look at how he actually runs. He doesn't actually slide around like a lot of other the, the, uh, NES guys do. He actually, he's actually running like a human being does. 
So, you know, visuals and, and character design really top notch here, I think. Listen to the music, man. Put on the headphones and, and jam out to the jams that's pumping through there. Not only do you got solid gameplay, great visuals, you also have a fucking booming ass soundtrack, man. This has some great music. Some great music that, um, to go along with this. I mean, it doesn't get any more perfect than that. Great visuals, uh, solid gameplay, great storyline. I mean, just totally e perfect in every way for for an NES game. They absolutely did it, did their thing back in '91. So I was wondering why why this game didn't get so much hype, or I, you know, the the the, the hype didn't got past me because. I never did see anything about this game in 91, so I'm, I'm not sure if I was just all of, really all about the Genesis. I just did not see this in 91. Um, I would have definitely, in 91, would have definitely gave this some play and um, enjoyed it. I wish I had a King Cross this game in 91. I really wish I had it. It would be just that more epic. Um, but I'm glad that I can appreciate a uh, 30 year old game now in every way I could still you know I could still appreciate these old games even if I've never played it during my childhood I could still love and appreciate it even not played it now as of right here I'm going to be doing some glitches in this game I'm usually not about glitches but I thought it'd be interesting to do a glitch. I did what you call the uh, grenade glitch. Where you enter the chambers of the boss. And upon entering the chambers. I think you hit select button or something like that. And when wh whatever button you use to, to use the grenade. And you have to do it right when you get there. And it would, it would absolutely body the boss in one hit. Pretty, pretty interesting. Listen to the soundtrack, guys. That's, that the soundtrack to this is fucking banging. This is m one of my favorite tracks in the game. Um, this is this is Sector Four. What's good about this game is you don't have to do it in you you not have to do this game in in the order orderly fashion. You don't you can be, pick and choose which order that you want to do this game in. And I figure getting all the all of the um, troublesome stages out of the way. Um, and leaving, leaving just the easy stages uh, to do along with the last stage. So, to me, this is one of the hardest stages in the game. So I decided to do this one after the the, the first stage would have probably been one of the last. But the only reason I picked the first stage is because when you you know when you go to a harder stage like this, you want to make sure you have um, some life fill ups and you want to make sure you have weapons so walking into uh walking into this game with no weapons and, and no fill up of a life and no uh extra um ex rations i used to call, call them rations because that's what they look like um it makes it harder so what i do is i start the first stage you know get powered up in the first stage you get a couple of um and you also get hamburgers too by killing the bosses Killing the bosses sometimes, you get little items and stuff, they drop off little items for you. The, the little hamburgers they drop off don't exactly fill up your life all the way, but when you pick up the little rations, they absolutely give you one bar of life. So I make sure I have at least one or two of those on hand in this stage, because uh, you know, to make sure if I get low, I, I'll have something that'll protect me from death. So this is why I start off with one and then I go straight to four. So basically four being one of the, I think it's the hardest stage in the game. Not really hard, but the hardest stage of the game. So I figure I get it out of the way uh, and leave all of the simple stages behind as the, uh, as the remaining stages. Great gameplay, great visuals, absolutely perfect in every way that you could do it in an NES game. Doesn't get any better than this, actually. Um, 
great stuff right here. Then I'm going to do, um, I'm definitely going to do three runs of Power Blade before I move to Power Blade 2, which is a whole other animal altogether to me. Can't beat that soundtrack, man. It's, the soundtrack is so badass, you know. I love playing games that has a great soundtrack. It gives you, it sort of motivates you in a way. And that's why it's good to have, <laughs> have your feet tapping while you're playing, trying to get past these enemies and these fucking bosses. You want, you, you want to have something, you know, dynamic to do it to, you know what I mean? So it's important that to, to make things memorable with music. Definitely a great job here with this game. Kind of wish I would have discovered this game back in the early 90s, but unfortunately, I was I was too too busy trying to trying to stay up with the the, the big boys, the big the, or, the, or the big girls. I stay up with it. Everyone else moving on fast, fastest technology moved on, um, and I always try to move up with it. Or I try I always try to move with the times. You know what I mean? I was never one of those type of people that was stuck back uh, still playing old games when everybody has already graduated to new games. I would be one of the first to cross over into the new era before anyone else does. So that was just me. But I could still, even at my age now, I could still appreciate these old games. Because there, there is something about the magic that these old games bring us that the newer games just doesn't do for us. And I guess even some of the newer, even some of the younger people can definitely uh, understand what I'm saying. But of course, with us growing up with the NES games and stuff like that, you know, we have a lot more to appreciate because we, we came up, we were coming up, you know, as kids during these times. And we played these games at their, at their, uh, at their infancy. And it's nothing more epic than that, I tell you that. When you play these games when they're popular <clears throat> and new, it's definitely a whole different and awesome experience. And it brings upon all of the magic. So, we don't expect it to ever be the same, of course. Even when we revive these old games, it'll never be quite magical than it was. But hey, you know what, it's the next best thing. So we're going into we're going into uh, sector four boss, which we're going to try the grenade glitch. You can only do the grenade glitch in certain stages. Pretty awesome man, to, uh, doing the grenade glitch. Um, I learned that on my very first try. It's pretty easy to do. Um, you just definitely just have to do it as you come into the chambers and just hit the the, uh, the button. And that's all you'd have to do. What's awesome about this is you can move around as, as often as you want to. So I guess I decided to go to Sector 5. Sector 5, probably um, one of the easier ones because Sector 5 is pretty much short. Um, and it has everything right there that you need. You, you can find, you got the, um, you got the boss. And you got your, your agent that has the ID card right there, all in one. This is the longer, uh, this, this of course isn't a speed run. Even though I'm doing some glitches, I'm trying something new here with glitches. I usually don't do glitches in my games, but I thought I'd do some glitches in this game just to try something new. Uh, and some, do some glitches that I learned. Uh, they put it all together into a new death run. So, something new and different. Something I don't always do. I don't always uh, believe in doing glitches. But when you learn to do glitches, it's, it's actually fun and interesting to people who like to see glitches. You know, I have an audience that, that do love glitches and, and actually love. So, I try to give some, some of my audience, which I have a mixture of, a little of something that they want. And I try to please them all with it, of course. Of course, you have the non glitchy people, and then you have the people that do love glitches and love to see perform people performing glitches. 
which I've never really done. I've always tried to play the game. Uh, play the game on a normal standpoint, but, you know, so sometimes I, I think... Um, I've even enjoyed some, you know, watching some, some glitched runs myself in the past. So, I thought I learned some for myself and may even do more uh, runs with glitches in it. But I have, I'll have a mixture of the two, of course. So as you can see, I grabbed my card and I'm trying to perform a glitch here which is called the wall clip this is the glitch where you could you can clip the wall and it'll make you a it will, it will make you jump up higher than you usually do it's called the wall clip and um, you could be able to get into spaces that you weren't no normally able to get into pretty good I was able to to uh, probably do that stage within uh, before Before it even got started. See how short that was? I took the shortcut as I normally would have to go around. So yeah, that's called the wall clip. Um, there, there. You can use those throughout the uh, stages in the game where you you can go through spots where you normally can't jump, and you do the wall clip, and you'll be able to take shortcuts. And a lot of the speedrunners use that. A lot of this, even though this is not a speedrun. Of course, I'm not meant for this to be a speedrun. It's just I'm just showing off the, a little glitch that I know uh, playing this game. But it's not. But you can see why the speedrunners use it because I was able to probably avoid that entire uh, sector five by just doing that wall clip. And I ab absolutely just absolutely just got through that stage probably earlier than five minutes. So, and that, you know, there are other stages that you can do the wall clip at, and you can absolutely, t totally avoid uh, having to go the long way. And, you know, speedrunners use that in order to get the fastest time, of course. So, I thought it was interesting that, that I was able to learn that fast, and I figure uh, that I included in my new death run of this game. I mean, just because, and you can do it yourself if you want to. Since I'm, I, I decided to go to one of one of the pet P stages, I think is Sector Three, um, because the Sector Three has, a, you know, has a several little spots. So I like to get this out of the way, and um, hmm, you must be Nova. I am your contact. So this is one of the contacts that. You're going to be looking for these guys throughout the stages. And they, you're going to have to find them to get the ID card, just like they said in the storyline. So that you can have access to the boss fights. Um, and if you don't get them before you get to the boss, you, ha you, ha you will not be able to enter the boss chambers without your ID card. So make sure you know where your guy is uh, or find him. Um, by exploring the stage and just find out where he is and uh, get get your ID card so that you can so you can so that you can get your boss fight so that you can get to go into the boss chambers and fight the boss without the ID card you can so as I got my ID card I can go straight to the boss now if, if I want to now I'm getting hit unnecessarily there Gotta watch these frogs. You can uh, absolutely miss the platform if you don't if you don't do your jumps. I don't think um, you'll get knocked back. I think only in the expert mode, if you hit those frogs, they'll knock you back into the pit. So basically, just just proceed with caution. got my suit the suits are, are you know saying if you want to use the suits the suits are very powerful um, and you definitely be able to move through all of the enemies with the suit in just one hit that's you see how powerful I see how he just took one hit to knock out those guys 
Badass stuff right there. So it allow you to move through the stage a little bit faster um, and run through the, you know, keep running through the bosses. I mean, not the bosses, but the, uh, the enemies. I'm not sure why I call the enemies bosses. So. I guess right now I'm trying to be careful here and not get, not get knocked off the platform because it's a good thing that the game is solid because that would be a problem right there to a game that you, that you, you, if you get on the platform, I play games where you get on platforms like that and the, the, uh, the gameplay is so sluggish, you would fall right off that platform without even knowing it. So this is why I like this game, because even platforming with this game, it's really pretty simple. And your man is not all over the place making little extra tiny steps that'll cause your death. Alright, number three, uh, Sector 3 boss. There is no, you, you cannot do the grenade glitch with this guy, you have to fight this guy head on. So basically, I, I usually just start um, at, at the end, on the left side, start there. So, and, and you'll be able to get a faster finish starting from uh, the, uh, the left side, the left corner, uh, upper head, left hand corner there. You cannot do the glitch here, so you just have to take them head on, which is no problem. These bosses are so simple and so easy. The bosses are very, very mediocre and easy in this game. And so I, I don't mind doing the glitch on some of these bosses because they're just, they're just easy. Anyway. Alright. Got Sector 3 done. I can play this game again and again and again. It's just a really fun game to play, I think. Even if people didn't think it had replay value, I think it does. Um... And I, I definitely think this deserves a speed run. You know, this is this is a very easy game to speed run here. It's a very you, you ever want to speed run a game, speed run this way. Uh, you know, you learn the glitches and throughout the stages. This should be an easy one to do. Um, do not do expert mode. Uh, expert mode will slow you down if you're trying to speed run it. I recommend you doing it on normal if you're going to speed run the game. Being that you can run right through the enemies and you won't get knockbacks, um, you could pretty much take hits. You know, of course, you got all of that up there, um, huge meter, so you can take hits from the enemies, and then the enemies won't knock you back. You can run right through them and they won't slow you down. So uh, doing doing a speed run on normal is the best way. Uh, you will get the fastest time by doing it on normal. That's if you're trying to get the, spa the fastest time. I would think doing a speed run that would probably uh, make sense to make it easier for you to get the, the fastest time. So good fun stuff. The game isn't too long. Um, the game is pretty much a you know a shotgun game, um, and you could probably finish it probably less less. I say probably finish it less than 15 minutes maybe. You could probably finish it in 15 minutes. It's a pretty sexy game. Uh, as a late NES title. Came out in 91 by Tato. Now, as you know, Tato is uh, very legendary for, get, for uh, a lot of great games and great titles. So who, who, who's surprised that this is from Tato? So, you know, definitely great... Uh, late NES title gotta remember during this time we were going into the 16-bit era 91 uh, we we're already knee-deep into it because I think the Genesis came out was probably dropped at 89 so uh, I got my Genesis in 90 in Christmas of 1990 um, into going into 1991 so I bet you can say, yeah, 91 is when I received it, basically. Two years after its initial release, which was, I think initially it was released in 89. 
So we're already, uh, you know, knee deep into the 16-bit era, and the arcade era, the, the, the beefier graphics, the great sounds, the gr awesome visuals. So you know, once I once I tapped into my Genesis, it, it was pretty much. I still played my NES from time to time. I still rented games like like Battletoads was one game I rented. I'm um, in '91. Um, I don't want. I don't know why you didn't come across this one in the in the. I just never seen this in the stores, or maybe I just didn't pay attention to it. But I didn't see this one in any of the rental stores that I came came across. I definitely would have given it by looking at. The, uh, the screenshots, I would have definitely given this game, I would have gave it some play, definitely, because it looks great, and I would have loved this as a kid, I would have definitely loved this as a kid, this is a pretty, I, I love this as an adult, I n definitely knew I would have loved it as a kid, so yeah, this is a pretty solid, solid game, I would give it a definitely a 9 in my book, what would make it a 10 is probably longer, probably a longer game, uh, probably more edgier bosses. You know, the bosses are to me. It's a little too easy here. Uh, the bosses were a little, little too easy. Uh, so just you know, give it, give, give us a little more edgy bosses. Give us more lengthier, uh, say more le le lengthier quest, a lengthier mission, and I would think it, it would definitely get a perfect ten easy. Definitely. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna perform a. Uh, another shortcut it's not even i don't know if you consider a glitch because you don't have to hit no buttons basically what you got to do is you got to just walk to the wall uh the it's called the invisible wall you just you just jump right into where the walls well where you where it doesn't look like the wall is missing and just jump into the little hole and there you go you don't have to do any fancy finger work or thumb work you just walk right through it so it's called the invisible wall and you know, and top that with the uh, the grenade glitch, like a motherfucking gangster. <laughs> this game, this this game is really really awesome. If you've never played this game, I think you should definitely check it out. If you never know, never know Death Run this game, you should definitely know Death Run this game. It's pretty easy. Uh, see, easy no Death Run guys. Once you get down the mechanics of the game. And you, you know what to do. It's not only fun, but it's actually easy to do. Taking a swig on my, my, my nice cold drink here. Um, getting pretty thirsty with all this talking though. But yeah, this is a. I'm, I'm definitely going to give you, bring you guys some Power Blade 2. Um, this is the one of the last. Probably last runs of 2021. We're gonna go into 2022 with Power Blade 2, guys. I'm gonna bring you guys Power Blade 2 No Death Run. Um, we're gonna do much other titles. Um, I thought this year would be the, the Battle Toast year, but I think 2022 is gonna be the year of the Battle Toast for me. We're gonna take out Battle Toast this year, that's for sure. This year coming up, and I will bring you all of that there. Um, uh, 2021 has been pretty. Pretty um pretty shitty for us, so I'm hoping for a better year uh, in 2022. Definitely for you know gaming. We've been down for a while as far as you know internet and all of that. For obvious reasons, got really you know family got really sick and just one one blow after another, um, and we just had to make some really difficult decisions of course. Uh, so. The, the, the best thing about that is I've got a, I've got a whole a shit load of videos to upload when I get the chance. Once I get the chance to upload all of these videos that I've done throughout the year of 2021, I would definitely bring that to you guys. I don't know why. I'm, <laughs> I guess I had to take a bathroom break while I was standing here. The reason why I'm standing here so long. Um, definitely not, can't do this if I'm no de if I'm um, if I'm doing a speed run in this game. I think I just had to take a bathroom break and I just kind of took a break there while he's sitting there. Sometimes those things happen. That's why before you do a no death one, guys, make sure you make sure you don't drink too much, uh, too much juice, water, or whatever you're drinking. Or and go to the bathroom before you do your no death one. 
Especially if you're if, if you're streaming it. <laughs> so a lot of times I I've, I've happened to take breaks. And at least if I'm not if I'm not streaming the game, uh, I could easily just you know, I could steal a couple minutes to, to go to the go to the the commode and then come back. And it'll probably still be alright. But just just do that guys before no death running a game. You know, take a bathroom break before that way you'll last longer throughout throughout the stage, uh, throughout the run. You can take a few. You can take some beatings in here. Uh, from the, from the uh, that's what I guess that's one of the things that makes it easy to make death run because you could take you could take some hit, some hits, you know, um, and and then. By killing the boss, but um, they're gonna go calling enemies bosses again. By killing the enemies, you know the little guys down there. By killing the enemies, you could get hamburgers, which they were absolutely f getting at least two or three of the hamburgers to give you a nice full bar of life. So they pretty much are, are lenient. They throw little goodies at you. Uh, if you get low in life, you can always redeem it back. If you, uh, that's why this game is so awesome to speed run because uh, they drop off like uh, little hamburgers that'll fill up your life along the way and goodies and grenades and everything. So make sure you kill all of the enemies and you know exactly what they're going to drop because it, can, it definitely will aid you in your run. Um, so that's why this is a badass one to no death, a uh, note to uh, speed run, no death run and speed run at the same time. And then you could be able to do it easily. Um, but they pretty much give you everything that you need to make it to make it a very very awesome run. Now we're coming up on the Sector Six boss, which you can absolutely cannot perform the grenade glitch on. You have to uh, you have to face them head on. Of course. That's never a problem because the, 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 these, the bosses in this game, are, they're easy. All this guy does is just walk towards you and just jumps over you. That's it. So basically all you have to do is just keep hitting with the boomerang and continue to hit them with the boomerang until he's dead. Pretty easy. Pretty, pretty damn easy. So now we got Sector 6 out of the way. Here's your little passwords, which you don't really need. Alright! Final stage! We're entering the final stage, guys. Pretty, pretty, pretty awesome stuff. You see how fast the game, I went through that game? It's true to alert. Intruder alert! The guy looks like mean. Uh, he he looks like mean the merciless from uh, the the Flash Gordon movie back in the early '80s. Every time I see him, I think of mean the merciless. It looks like him a little, you know, with the bald head and the little goatee. Okay, we are now at the final stage, Sector Seven. Um, you cannot use the grenade glitch. On the final boss, you have to face the final boss head on. Um, like I said, no problem because these bosses are no problem. They're absolutely no problem. So, so what you're gonna do here is go to the left and grab some goodies, grab a suit. That's gonna make you the all-powerful Nova, and you become you be, you, you become Supernova. You become supernova in the suit right here because you can you can absolutely one hit every enemy in your path. You can do one hit kills. See that? So you can go from playing Nova to Supernova. Yes, yeah, pretty awesome stuff. And then you can uh and which that and the suit is another thing that aids you in speedrun because you can absolutely just continue. You can take three you can absolutely get hit three times without it causing damage to you. The, the suit you can get hit for a maximum of three times and you can continue running through running through the enemies 
which getting the suit definitely have to do that and it would it would aid you to finish the stage faster you can get three free free uh free um free hits <coughs> excuse me get those rations get those uh get the uh, supernova suit i call it the supernova suit um and get the rations which is going to definitely aid you in your boss fight because the the bot the the end boss has two forms, so you'll have more than enough life to finish him off and get your supernova suit and then just go back around. Of course, they're going to put you right back here. You'll make it there in no time. You can actually get hit in the suit the maximum of three times without it causing any damage to you. So it actually sort of makes you invisible for, for a time. I would say definitely keep it as long as you can. But don't worry about it if you lose it because you know it really does make the game way too easy because you'll be able to body those enemies in one hit. So it just makes the game go from easy to super easy. So I really don't when I lose the suit, I, I, I don't care because it's already easy enough. The game is already easy enough. And the only thing the suit does is makes this easier. So I don't care. I don't care to keep the suit. It's not like you need it. You really don't. I think Nova is good just being Nova. Being supernova is just overkill. Listen to the score in, in, in this final, final stage. I love how all the stages have, di have a different um, background music and you're not listening to the same music you listened to on the first stage. They all have their own individual track. That's what I like. They have their own individual track. You can see the mean, the merciless guy there again, his face. I think I took a break here too um, on this part as my guy's standing there for some odd reason. So I think I probably got up and got me a drink or something like that. You know, I've got plenty of time on the clock, you know, seven minutes and 75 seconds. So I could stay here for seven minutes, I, you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna stay here for seven minutes, but I could if I'd like to. Well, of course, I'm not going to, but I have plenty of time. Cause the, the, the end boss is just right up, right up above me. That's pretty, pretty much it. We're gonna be going straight to the end boss, the, the final boss, right when we get up above here. All right, here we go. Let's do it to it. I wish my camera would not, would just focus. I hate it when my camera does this. All right, let's go in and fight Ming the Merciless. Only you're gonna be fighting Ming the Merciless head in the first, um, the absolute first form, which is pretty easy. I say move out of the way of the uh, the little projectile there. Just move out of the way and hit him on the side of the head or in the mouth when he opens his mouth. So this is what Ming the Merciless looked like, the guy that this is what he looks like? Bruh. Come on now. Right, we're getting ready to go into the second form. After we get two more hits on the enemy. Okay, this is the real boss. I don't know why I chose to go underneath him. It's definitely better to do it from the sides. I don't know what I was thinking here. I thought I was trying to take him out a lot faster by doing it from the bottom. No, I think the side's better. You take less, you probably take less of a beating too. 
But what do you do it on the bottom or, or the side? It's a pretty easy boss. It's a pretty easy shit here. All right, there you go. No death run. No death run. Woo! I did it. Yes, baby. No death run. Another no death run from your girl retro star. Oh, you gotta love that music too. Pretty, pretty good stuff. Um, at least it's you. You know, at least you do have an ending here. Great. It's a very short and sweet ending, but it's an ending. I've played games that have no ending, and it, it just it just loops. Well, guys, thank you for joining me in my run, and stay tuned, everybody, for more runs of Power Blade and Power Blade 2. Keep it fucking retro, everyone. Enjoy the ending.